Hey, hey, party people, I'm behind the camera today in this installment of the construction series with Mariah. We are going to, well, she is going to show you, I'm not going to show you anything. <laughs> she is going to show you how to sew some of the most common seams that we use to construct clothes. Okay, she is working on a Juki industrial single needle lock stitch machine, but the things that she's going to show you, you can do on a home machine. It's fine. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so, like Zoe said, we're on the, the Juki on the industrial machine, but any machine is great. No one in the world sits down at the machine and sews beautifully the first time. That's just, I've never seen it happen. I've been teaching for seven or eight years. I have over 100 students a semester. I've never seen somebody just sit down and just be a natural. That doesn't exist. Practice, practice, practice. I like to keep my stitch width at two and a half. Bigger than that, you would want to use for like basting, which is kind of a temporary stitch if you were, um, if you were gonna create ruffles or um, kind of gather your fabric, you would do a basting stitch. We're not gonna do that today, we're just gonna do basic stitches. Um, so two and a half is a good place. If you have it really small, say like one and a half, uh, it's gonna be really tight and it's gonna kind of pull your fabric in a little bit too tight. So two and a half is a good base place to be. Uh, that's kind of the the baseline. So you can change your stitches per inch or your, your stitch width um, based on different projects. Unless it's been said to you specifically like by a teacher or if you understand the fabric, oh I need to turn this down or turn it up, just kind of stick around that, that range, two and a half. Um, so I'm going to start with the most basic stitch, the easiest, and work our way up and get progressively a little bit more challenging uh, as we go. So your basic straight stitch what you want to do is take two pieces of muslin, I'm going to line them up exactly, exactly. Um, this is the one place where I'm like very specific that if you, if you have it off, if you're pinning it and one side is a little bit bigger than the other, your seam allowance is going to be off. So on something like this, it's not going to be, you know, a huge deal because I'm just sewing a square. If I were to do that, if I were making a garment, say that I was making a dress and it's got like six or seven seams, if I'm off by an eighth of an inch on six seams, that's you're going to end up with a garment that's either three quarters of an inch too big or three quarters of an inch too small. That can make a big difference um, in the fit of the garment. So with each seam, it adds up. So you want to make sure as you go that you're really lining these up perfectly. Throw in a couple pins to hold it together. You'll notice that I put my pins horizontally. I don't put them vertically so that as I'm sewing, I'm just pulling it out as I go. So I'm going to turn on my machine. You hear the little hum of the motor warming up. I usually give it a couple seconds to just get, um, get warmed up. And then I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna sew a half an inch seam allowance. So I'm just lining this up, putting my foot on. I always use my hand to put the needle, start it down. This is a great trick because if you don't, sometimes when you first start sewing, the needle goes up first before going down. And if your thread is too short, it'll unthread your needle. It's the most annoying thing in the world. You're constantly re-threading your needle. The way to get around that is just always start with your needle down. So I'm gonna sew a couple stitches forward. Oh yeah, this is Mariah's first time at my Juki, so yes. give her a second so, to warm up to mine. Actually, it's, yeah, it's good to feel. So with hers, it's kind of like a car where you put, you put your foot on the gas and there's almost like a little time delay, a little delay to it. So it's good to, Sew a couple, a couple lines before you start working with your actual fabric to get to know your machine because some are super jumpy where you barely touch it and you're like zooming. And so you want to be prepared. So I sewed like two or three stitches forward. I'm going to hold down my back stitch. So two or three stitches backwards. Um, and what that does is it locks the stitch. So if you are hand sewing, that's where you tie the knot to get it started. Okay, so now I'm going to sew forward. Pulling out my threads as I or my needles as I go. You don't want to sew over your pins. Um, these are pretty thin, so it's not the end of the world. But if I were using thicker pins, they could break the needle. So you want to make sure that you're um, that you're not sewing over your pins that you're taking them out each time. So what I'm doing, I'm not actually looking at the stitch line as it's going. I'm looking at the seam allowance. I'm making sure that it stays lined up with my little ruler on the side that says half an inch. 
So once I get to the end, I'm going to back stitch, couple stitches. I pull my needle all the way up before I pull it out. And if you have a home sewing machine, you're gonna use usually your hand lifting. If you have an industrial machine, you can use your knee and that lifts. Pull it out and cut. I just wanna interject with one thing, just that Mariah won't know because she's not used to my machine at all. But my machine, because it's a very basic machine that I got a million years ago, the feet dogs on the bottom are gonna move the fabric along at a little faster pace than the top fabric. And that's why it's good to have your notches matching. It's good to pin at certain intervals so that you're keeping everything lined up if you're using a machine that's a little bit older like mine. Some of the newer ones, you're not gonna have that problem. So it really depends on the machine you have. So that's why we pin and make sure everything is lined up as we do these longer seams. Yes. So you can see that I have a really nice, clean, straight stitch. It's a half inch seam allowance all the way along. So when I open up to the front of the garment, it's nice and clean. Um, if you get to this point and you open it up and there's ripples along here, or it's being pulled or stretched, that means typically that your tension is off. So you want to adjust it. You want to learn how to troubleshoot your machine. Okay, so now that we've sewn a basic straight stitch seam, um, let's do an edge stitch. So we are gonna take what we just learned and just add to it. So we're gonna begin with a basic straight stitch seam. Okay, so we sewed our basic straight stitch seam again. Um, I just pressed the seam allowance to one side and I'm gonna do uh, an edge stitch. So an edge stitch is going to be, um, it's either a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So for this one, I'm gonna look at the foot on here. I'm gonna line this up with the side of the foot. So the needle is going through the very center, um, the very center hole of the foot. If I line up my seam, with the side of the foot, the inside side of the foot, it's gonna sew at about a 16th of an inch all the way along. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna do my stitch and back stitch to lock it into place. Stitch. And make sure you're stitching on top of your seam allowance because the point is to keep that seam allowance tucked in. Yes. So the point of top stitching or doing an edge stitch, uh, it has two purposes. It's either decorative, so you want to have that kind of cooler, tougher look where like more utilitarian, having cool detailing and seaming. Um, or it's like, say that, say that you're making a uniform jacket. You're gonna wear that every day to work. You're gonna want something really strong and tough. So what you want is stronger seams. So it reinforces the seam. Um, while creating that kind of decorative stitch, it's also making the seam twice as strong. So on the front side, you'll see that there's the seam and about a 16th of an inch over, there's a nice straight um, edge stitch. On the underside, you'll be able to see and at this point, when you turn it over, you'll be able to see how wavy your line is because you'll see two lines next to each other. So it should be consistent all the way through. And next I'm gonna do the top stitch and then you can kind of see the comparison. Okay, so for the top stitch, you're gonna just start with the same exact straight seam we've already, um, we've already demoed. Press the seam allowance to one side. And just like the edge stitch where we did right along that edge, for a top stitch, you're going a quarter of an inch over. From your edge. So for that one, instead of looking at the inside side of the foot, we're going to line it up with the outside side of the foot. So I'm lining up my seam with that outside edge. Back stitch, and I'm just keeping it lined up with that side. Same process as the edge stitch, it's just further over. So top stitch is a quarter of an inch. The next one that we're gonna do is going to be a welt seam, which is essentially a combination of 
all three that we just did. A straight stitch, an edge stitch, and a top stitch. And that's gonna give a really nice strong seam. So I'm just gonna start with my straight stitch at a half an inch. Iron it to one side. I'm gonna do my edge stitch. And then for this top stitch, I'm gonna look not at the seam, but at the, um, at the stitch line, and that's what I'm gonna line up against my foot. So it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see too with that really dark thread. We're gonna sew a quarter of an inch from that edge stitch. So for this one, you can see on this side, we've got two stitch lines, a quarter of an inch apart. We turn it to the underside, we've got three stitch lines, a sixteenth of an inch, and then a quarter of an inch. So this is three lines of defense here. This garment is not coming apart, okay? Sometimes people will even overlock it first and then do this um, to kind of clean finish. Um, that can probably be for a later video, the overlock. All right. So to do a flat felt seam, um, similar to the welt seam, this is gonna be a really nice extra strong seam um, where you're doing, uh, you're doing multiple lines of stitching, but this is one that it kind of clean finishes the underside, whereas the welt has this raw edge. So for this seam, what you wanna do is start with your seam allowance a quarter of an inch in. So if you need to, if you need to use a ruler and draw a quarter of an inch line, you can. Um, you're gonna start with this a quarter of an inch in. And for me, the way that I can tell without having to draw that line is on my sewing machine, I can line up the bottom one at the half inch mark and the top one at the side of the foot because that's a quarter of an inch in. Are you still doing right side to right side? Oh, good question. Um, yes, so with every seam except the French seam, you're doing face to face. Let's say this is our face of our garment. It's got some cute stars on cute it. Cute little stars. <laughs> okay, so face to face. Sorry, I should say you guys can pen. I've, I've been sewing daily for about 13 years, so I don't use as many pens as I should, but you guys definitely pen during the whole process while you're learning. So now what we want to do is go over to the iron and fold that extra quarter of an inch over to the seam. And I'm going to press that flat. Quarter of an inch and fold it over and press. Then I'm going to open up the seam and I'm going to fold it over and give it another press. So you can see how it takes that raw edge in there and it just wraps that fabric around and envelops it. So you can see from the front, it's going to be really nice and clean once it's sewn. Okay, so now we're going to go back over to the machine. All right, so now what we want to do is an edge stitch along this open edge, which should be a quarter of an inch off of our stitch line. stitch and then back stitch. You could tell my machine is old school because it's so loud. <laughs> it does the job though so don't feel like y'all need to buy the latest and greatest machine out there. I This machine has always done me well forever. My surgery is even older than my single needle. Still awesome. All right, so you can see that you end up with very similar um, look to the welt seam um, on one side, but on the back side, the welt has the raw edge. On the back side, we have this, um, this flat, nice clean seam, okay? And you mentioned that there are a couple of different ways to do this, but this one is your favorite? Yes, so this is one way um, you can also sew a, um, a half inch seam allowance, just like normal, and then you just cut down one side to a quarter of an inch. So that's another way that you can do it, and then you're just doing the same thing, you're, you're pressing it around, and then doing your edge stitch. Um, so just depending on if 
if you keep a quarter or a half an inch seam allowance on your pattern, say that you're making a min shirt, if your seam allowance on the front and the back is a half an inch, um, then that's a good way to do it. Sew it in at a half an inch and trim one side down to a quarter of an inch. If you anticipated doing a flat filled seam um, at your patterning stage and you have your the front of your pattern that's a half an inch, the back of your pattern that's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, then it's already that way and you can just um, sew it together, fold it over and press. And this is really nice for unlined things because it really cleans all that. Yes. And sometimes overlock can look a little bit cheap. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is really nice. I like that. It's an extra step for sure. I mean, it's much easier and faster to just overlock something, but not everybody has an overlock machine and this is going to really clean, clean finish your seams and you're going to end up with a super strong, super durable seam. Um, so this is really great for like working with denim, working with like pants weight fabrics. Um, it's just a good strong seam. I think all my husband's shirts are done. Like the side seams yeah. are done like that. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty. It's, nice. it's a pretty standard way to do um, mostly men's shirting, but in, in women's as well. Um, women's tends to do more of the French seam. All right, so we are going to do the French seam. Um, which is basically the opposite of all the other seams we sew face to face. For the French seam, we're gonna sew wrong side to wrong side. And for this, I'm gonna line them up. And French seams are really great um, for things like sheer fabrics, for silks, for lace, um, something where you don't wanna have any raw edges on the inside. Um, on the inside of your garment, like a silk. You would never want to overlock a silk. You wouldn't want to have raw edges. For a lace, you wouldn't want it falling apart open on the inside. Um, so a French seam is a really nice finish for that. Uh, so like I said, with the flat felled seam, a lot of times for men's shirts, that's kind of the seam that they do. Um, for women's shirts, most of the time they do a um, French seam. It's just a little bit more feminine detail. So we're gonna start this by sewing at a quarter of an inch. So our pattern is going to be patterned at a half an inch seam allowance. We're basically going to do a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch down the line. So it ends up in total being the half inch, but we're going to start with just a quarter. Our fabrics that we're using, especially sheer lightweight fabrics or a lace or something, typically they're going to have a lot of fray. We don't want to have fray coming through our seam, so you want to cut it down halfway. So we're cutting it down to an eighth of an inch. But really just cutting anything off the top is is fine. So if you cut a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch away, either way is fine. You just want to clean up that edge. So now we want to go over to the iron and press. Okay, so you can see right now that the fabric is face out. So what we want to do first is we press the seam flat. Then we press it to one side, doesn't matter which side it is. Press it nice and flat to one side. And then we want to turn it to the inside of the fabric and press it right along that, that stitch line. Um, and you want to make sure that you're pretty accurate with this because you don't want a wavy, um, a wavy seam. Yeah, you could tell a cheap garment yeah. by that messy rolled French seam. Yes. Oh, yes. the worst. And like why take all the time and effort to do a French seam, which takes twice as long as any other seam, and then do it poorly? Yeah. You know, if you're going to do it, do it really well. So you'll see that that press is right down the very center of that seam. Bam. You shouldn't even be able to see it because it's just right on that edge. So we press down that seam. So you can see if I open it up to the front side, we've got that... Um, all that seam allowance is going to the outside of the garment. What we want to do is sew it so that it closes that off and it's a really beautiful clean seam. So the way that we do that is line this up. We're going to sew it, throw in your pins. We're going to sew it now at a quarter of an inch. And because we trimmed away some of that seam allowance, we shouldn't see when we open it back up, you shouldn't see little threads sticking out. So I'm going to line it up at a quarter of an inch. Stitch and back stitch. This is where I see students getting sloppy or amateur sewers get sloppy. Like, did you notice how Mariah pinned it 
even though that seam is already sewn, she pins it so that to prevent it from rolling sideways mm -hmm. as you stitch that second seam. Yes. So now the inside is nice and clean. It's a super strong seam and it cleans all that seam allowance to the inside. And you can see on the outside, it's a beautiful straight line. Um, at this point, you would just iron it flat. You're good to go. That's your French seam. All right, we're gonna do a corner seam. Um, and you wouldn't normally mark on your fabric, but I put these lines on here so that I can show you um, what I'm doing with this seam. So you have two pieces. If you're lining it up kind of like a puzzle piece, visually it doesn't line up, right? You think it's not gonna fit. But in reality, we're sewing the, um, the seam allowance at a half an inch, so it's gonna end up lining up right along that half an inch and it should, if it's done properly, line up really nicely and be a nice square. So the way that we're gonna do this, so if this is my face, and this is my face, I'm gonna take, I want my square to end up like this, so I need to go face to face, so I'm turning it over. I want to sew this down, all the way down until the quarter of an inch seam allowance, so a quarter of an inch on either side, or sorry, excuse me, a half an inch seam allowance. So a half an inch on either side, that's gonna be the point that I'm gonna stop and turn. So I'm gonna line this up. And I'm gonna sew to that half an inch point, and I'm using a half inch seam allowance. If your seam allowance is wrong, um, when you're sewing, if you're doing wobbly lines, or if you're doing a quarter of an inch or five eighths of an inch, if you're off at all, the end product, um, it's not gonna line up at the side. So the same when we do a curve seam, um, if your seam allowance isn't perfect, this is the one time that it really does, uh, it does become obvious. So make sure that you're paying attention that it's a half an inch. I'm gonna sew, backstitch. I'm gonna sew to that point and I wanna make sure that my needle is down at that point. Okay, this is really important. If your needle's up, it's gonna skip that stitch and it's not gonna do a clean corner. You're gonna end up with a little bit of a curve in your corner. So my needle's down. On an industrial machine, I'm gonna lift with my knee and lift up the foot. On a home sewing machine, you're gonna lift up your foot. We wanna take it. And actually, even on an industrial machine, because I'm gonna be working in here and I don't wanna accidentally stitch through my finger, I'm gonna lift this so I'm not having to deal with my knee very much. So you can take your nippers or your scissors and what you want to do is cut a straight line across that corner. So I'll move this so that you guys can see a little bit better. Um, so I just cut to that corner, okay? And that's going to allow me to open up my fabric and it's going to make this corner move a lot easier. Now I'm going to turn. Now I need to take my corner and turn that. So it's going to fight you a little bit. You just need to um, kind of make sure all this extra fabric is out of the way. I think that's the number one problem I had is I kept sewing over like an extra layer. Yes. So it move all the stuff out. Yeah. If you don't move every little bit out, you're going to end up with a little pucker in there. And that's where the fabric kind of folds over, like a little tiny fold. So you don't want to pucker. So you really want to just take an extra minute, make sure that all your fabric's out of the way. I feel ahead of it. Um, and then make sure it's nice and clean. Then I'm going to set this down and start sewing again. Okay. At this point, you can pin it. So you should have a nice clean corner. Now you can see you can see my lines on there that I drew ahead of time, um, so you can see that it's that it's a clean corner. And what you want to do is press, and you can even take this corner, my scissors, and clip your corner so it's not the fabric's not fighting so much. And then you can press it flat. So you have a corner here, corner there, and it's flat. We're gonna do the curved seam, which is similar, um, 
This one feels like it's not gonna fit, right? But if we sew it with the correct seam allowance, it's gonna line up and fit perfectly. So for this one, I went ahead and I notched my fabric. So I know as I'm sewing that my notches are gonna line up. If my notches don't line up, there's no way to correct that during sewing. If, if I start sewing and these two notches don't match, they're off, everything else is gonna be off. So at that point, you wanna pull out your seam ripper and go back and start again. So what I wanna do is start in the beginning and this one, it's kind of hard. You can't really, because you're working around this curve, you can't really pin ahead of time, but I'll use a couple pins as I go. So I'll kind of hold together the beginning part. And this, I'm gonna sew, a curve like this, you would wanna sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna start with um, stitching and back stitching. And I'm moving it in as I go. And as soon as I can, um, as soon as they'll line up, I'll go ahead and pin where those two notches are. because I wanna make sure that they stay lined up, that one of them's not stretching um, away from the other. So my notches, my first notches match. So we're like quarter of the way there, going smooth. It's just really important that you keep the correct seam allowance as you go. And you wanna make sure that you're not pulling fabric. Because this is around a curve, you're actually working with the bias, which means that it's the stretchiest part of the fabric. So the fabric's gonna fight you a little bit. It's gonna to wanna to be pulled, it's gonna to wanna to stretch out of place. Um, so you wanna just make sure that you're staying on top of that and not letting it. Okay, so I'm lining it up. It's like my second notches match. That's a good sign. Keep going. So now you can see that you end up with a nice curved seam. Um, right now you can see one side is nice and straight, the other side has all those crazy little ripples. You can do one of two things. You can either press it flat down, um, if, you're, if your fabric and if your pattern indicates that that's fine. If it's a pattern that needs to have the seam allowance pressed up, what you can do is take your scissors, you can just cut little triangles of fabric out from this inside and that's going to allow it to lay down flat. Making sure that you're not cutting through your stitches, but if you do that all the way along, then it'll lay down flat. So really for this one, I, if you can, you just want to press it out flat. So you can see that it's a nice smooth curve and it keeps a consistent quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way through. And you often use a quarter inch seam allowance for more the really more curvy, curve, yeah, because it's really hard to get that with a wider seam allowance. Yes, yeah, and it gets it gets kind of bulky with that extra seam allowance. So right now we push down, but say that you have a pattern where you can't push it down, where say that's like the end of a garment or something like that. Say that you're making a scallop on the end of a skirt, you wouldn't be able to push it down, so you'd have to push all that seam allowance up you're gonna have to trim away. So if you had a half inch seam allowance there, you would have so much fabric that you're just cutting away and it's bulky and the top of your seam would be thick mound. So it's just nice, um, if you can, on a curve to use a smaller seam allowance. It just makes a cleaner product. So that's our curve seam. Is that it? That's it. Oh my God, that's so much. I, I'm like, is that it? I'm like, oh no, wait, we sewed like a million seams. Yeah. All right. Next uh, week, let's tailor a whole outfit. All right, <laughs> I'm down. Okay, that should only be like a 17,000 hour video. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> All right, I'm still back behind the camera. Um, but uh, do give Mariah a round of applause. <laughs> Tell me if you want her back for more videos, if you love her teaching style, if you don't, go away. No, I'm kidding. I mean, come on. <laughs>
Anyway, so please do hit the thumbs up button if you learned something new today. Mariah also preaches practice makes better because yeah. perfect There's doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist. <laughs> practice makes better. Practice not magic. All right. So subscribe, share, drop your questions in the comment section. Check the description box for links to related videos. And I will see you in the next video.